Well, hello, folks. I uh, figured I would go out it this morning and put that rewind on there. I checked the mail. I actually got my brand new carburetor in for this, but I wonder if it's not the governor that's causing the problem. The spring on there is good. The uh, spring for the governor, it's pretty good yet. I haven't messed with the tension on it, so I don't think that's a problem. Um, anyways, I'll show you what it's doing now. I will choke it. I'll give it a little pull here. It's uh, still starting to feel the choke halfway on. It is cold though, it hasn't ran in a couple hours yet. You can see it's still messing up a little bit. As soon as I shut this off, it quits. Leans right out. But it does start pretty easy though with the cord. I'm gonna play with that adjustment. But it just seems like the governor's playing around. You know, I'm gonna give it an oil change too and see if that helps. Maybe an oil change will fix that right up. Maybe the oil is just a little too stiff in the bottom of the engine. Definitely give that a shot anyway. Have this here ready to go to work already. So we're oh, we're just gonna cut those slabs up big for tonight. I forgot about that. Instead of going to the bush, and we got this stuff too. We'll cut this up. Be better, eh? And tomorrow is supposed to be minus 24, so we'll go break some trail in the bush tomorrow, maybe. Give us something to do. Anyway, I do want to run another log through here though, babe, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I was up to today, folks. Put the new carburetor on, the new recoil. Maybe it'll straighten out once it's run for a while. No, still trying to lean out. I'm going to shut the stroke off. And there's no set on this uh, float either, they're a plastic float. So I can't even adjust that. All right, folks. Well, this is not a firewood video, so to say, or a logging video, really. I guess it kind of pertains to that. I uh, wanted to show you how lovely it looks in here. We thought we would come in for a little drive and break some trail. It's supposed to get really cold tonight. So I thought with that said, we would come in and break some more trail. So these trails will be hard as rock overnight. It'll be like pavement. Where we're running, we're on a fairly fresh trail now that we just broke a few minutes ago. And I'll show you what you see. You can see I'm still sitting in here. Go so watch this. I'm standing on a bit of a crust here. But that's really, that's how much snow we got. It's not that much. I mean, I'm standing on it with this much snow, but then it's about that much moss. It's just not even up to my knees. It's about halfway between my ankles and my knees. Not much snow at all. But, uh, as long as we pack it good, we're good. But if you don't pack a trail first and try to come in here with those bobsleighs, you're down to the moss. It's funny too because this is a sandy area that we still get that moss growing in around the pine trees. But we do get a lot of dead trees like this. Somebody asked me why I don't cut down, why I don't remove a lot of the trees that's laying on the ground or leaning. A lot of the trees you see leaning still, some of them may be they're probably pretty much dead, but they're still holding on there and they're putting out pine cones. So as long as there's still a bit of green on a tree, especially a jack pine here, or most pines and spruce I imagine, as long as there's a little bit of green on them, they put out, they put out cones because they know they're dying, so they want to reseed. Just like humans, I guess they want to spread their genes, they want to keep it going. Uh, so that's why I don't cut the trees down. If there's any green on them and they're still leaning, I leave them so they can reforest. And the trees are laying right on the floor in here. I don't touch those either because chances are they're so waterlogged from it raining and soaking up the water from that moss. It's not going to be good either. And they break down and they help feed the, uh, the other trees, I guess. I don't know if it's a it's carbon that they get out of it or what they get, but anyways, maybe nitrogen too and they rot. I'm not 100% sure. 
I don't really know that much about it. All I know is I get the stuff that's dead standing like this one up here. There's no green on it at all. It's dead totally. And these little, these little stubby ones here too for firewood. It's not very tall, maybe six, eight feet. And there's this little, little dead one here. It's clearly been dead for a while and there's nothing, nothing using it as far as, uh, you know, maybe flies using it, I don't know, but, but there's no larger critters using it. So yeah, now it is only about minus 10 degrees Celsius, maybe minus 11 out here today. And uh, it is supposed to go down to minus 24 tomorrow. But I just we brought in Heather's little sleigh there. We're just gonna get a quick little load just for something to do. We do have all those slabs out there. Somebody asked me why I didn't cut up the slabs beside the mill. Well, to be honest with you, I just haven't got around to it. We do have a surplus of, of wood, firewood. And uh, maybe someday I'll go at it. But we wanna clean up some of this on our new trails, get it cleaned up in here. So something never happens if there's a lightning strike, we don't lose the whole forest. Out in the yard, there's not much chance of it taking fire out there and burning the whole forest down It's in the yard. But in here, I worry about it. I like to clean it up. And uh, that way there's less chance of a fire, I hope. There's not as much dry around to light. Okay, well I'm gonna get at this, folks. Well, we got all our trails broke pretty much. Packed them down pretty good. We uh, figured we'd cut up some of this dead tree, there's one standing right here in the way. See it, I don't know if it shows up too well right there anyway. And we topped it to that small. And it fit in her little sleigh and a little bit in the back rack. But uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty easy getting it this length, isn't it Heather, compared to the eight foot? Yes it is. Look at all the dead stuff in here, it's unbelievable on this trail. There's some good saw logs in here. There's that big dead one way up in there too. And we're gonna head out do a little more out there it is really starting to snow and it looks so nice in here this is our favorite spot to be in the winter you throw some Christmas lights on some of these trees and wouldn't that look nice in here just this goes on and on as far as the eye can see this bush just beautiful I'll do a 360 Show you what it looks like in here. There's a few white birch in here as well. There's another one right there. Nice little Christmas tree there. And there's my partner. <laughs> yeah. There's one leaning, there's one on an angle up there. I might cut him. If there's nothing living in it. You see it's running up on an angle there. I might get that one. It's been off the ground long enough. I mean, it's been off the ground, so it'll be still good. It's laying on the ground. I don't like to touch them, these are just soggy. Anyways, we're gonna head out and see if we uh, don't lose any of this stuff on the trail. <laughs> so this is an engine, belongs to my friend. It needs the points changed. That's what he was told when he bought it. Maybe that magnet is strong in there. Ooh. Sometimes you don't want to let go. There. So I see whoever did this already took the advance off. That advance is supposed to go in there to open up those points. And that crank is pretty dry and sticky. Plus the flywheel key is on there still. Yeah, those points are dirty. At least the threads are good. Now we have another set of breaker points right here. Right here, and they look not too bad yet. They need a little cleaning. What I'm gonna do is test these uh, coils and condensers, and if the condenser and coils all good, all I'm gonna do is just unplug these like so. Right here, unplug the other coil wire right there and then I'll have to undo the ground and this whole unit will come off and I'll just switch the whole thing instead of monkeying around removing the uh, points and condensers hopefully they're already preset at the proper spacing I will check it out and then I'll put a timing light on here I'll just build a makeshift light 
Now make sure they're opening fine. So with these, you set the top at uh, 14 thou is what they should be open at the top set. And, and you turn this flywheel over, you can see there's a mark here. There's a mark here and a mark here, one for the top and one for the bottom. And this goes on here, but this has to be set in the advanced position when it goes on here. So, so you advance it to fully advanced. Actually that flywheel, something funny with that flywheel here. What is going on there? Let me take a look here. Yes, see? See that? The advance is missing on this flywheel. See, that's the advance part here. Somebody, I don't know why they put a... That flywheel don't like, like it belongs on there, to be honest with you. Oh, the lobe's built right on, but there's no advance. That is kind of strange. Well, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing this. Because that should sit down in here. And when this flywheel spins fast enough, it gets this thrown out like this. Which advances your timing on these little engines. So the faster this flywheel spins, the further out this little weight gets thrown and it advances this little cam in here to open your points and closes it. But I don't know why they have that style on there with the built-in. So, so there don't look like there was any advance on that machine, but we're going to put the, the unit on with the advanced timing for sure. I don't know why that's... i never seen one like that. That's an older one. We're not going to be running that. We're going to be running something new. Is that a 248? That's a that's a 343. So that's only a 340. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 343. Yeah, 248 is 250. Okay. Um, so one of these flywheels did not go. I guess I'm not sure why. I'm not sure. Anyways. I'm putting the newer style flywheel on with the advanced setup on there. As long as this will slide on, I will know as soon as I take, yeah, it'll slide on there quite fine. I just got to clean that crank up with some emery cloth and it'll be fine. And those usually come off with Allen bolts and yes they do. And then I have to pull the side cover off as well to get the wiring harness out of there. No big deal. I will uh, check the bearing in this fan as well while I'm at it. Seems pretty good. Eh, it's a little dry. Not too bad though. At least it's not wobbly. Anyways, that's going to be my project tomorrow. If it's too cold to work outside, I will be out here working in this uh, little trailer. Somebody asked why I get these trailers. Usually these trailers up here are given away because nobody wants them because they're too old, these camper trailers. I like to get them for storage store stuff in them. They're, they're like makeshift uh, sheds basically with, with axles and tires under them for, for free just to remove them. And this one here has actually been re-insulated with two inch styrofoam. Look at That's all blue two inch styrofoam in there. Can you see that? Somebody has redone that. That styrofoam is all up in the ceiling as well. It's all on the floor. Somebody's really taking their time and, and sheeted this in. Do you see in the old bathroom too? Look at the floor. It's all that blue two inch styrofoam in the walls so you can see it in there. Like they redid this whole camper trailer. So so this trailer we have a lot of this spare spare knotty pine paneling, uh, a couple sinks, bags of insulation from when we tore down a house and then we have this spare seat for my Polaris up in there as well. And I have my chop saw here and just different stuff I keep in here. Uh, yeah, so it's a great, these are great for here because we don't get taxed on having these because they're small. As long as we move them around a little bit, I guess I'm not sure what the rule is, but it's small enough. We don't, and we don't have codes here to follow. So anyways, these little trailers are great for us. Uh, eventually what I will do once, if this gets really bad, what I will do is I will tear the top off, salvage the styrofoam, salvage the pieces I can out of it. And I'll build a utility trailer out of the frame and axle. But uh, anyways, folks, this video is probably getting long enough and uh, I didn't uh, want to do another firewood video for you guys. I didn't know if you're getting bored of that. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I don't know. But uh, anyways, I got a little bit of firewood today, ran the mill a little bit, did some work on the mill. Uh, and now I'll be working on this tomorrow if it's nice. And then as soon as it warms up enough, I will start uh, working on my big tractor. Anyways, you folks take care and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.